When I first heard of the Harry Potter phenomenon, I was shocked to find out that over 100 million books have been sold. 40 different countries and languages of these books. Millions of children around the world are consumed, and adults too, with the stories and books of Harry Potter and now the movie. Let me say by introduction uh, to this video presentation that, first of all, I'm not trying to spoil uh, your children's childhood or your life or uh, cause you not to have any fun, nor am I trying to run your life. You can make your own decisions, and my job today on this video is to tell you what the Bible says about the, the Harry Potter story, what is taught in the Harry Potter books. And we're going to begin with Deuteronomy chapter 18, then we'll get into the video presentation part of the message. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse number 9. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse number 9. The Bible says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Now, in verses 10, 11, and um, 12, God gives a list of about eight things that are abominations to him. He told the children of Israel, he said, for these abominations, I'm driving out these nations before thee. In other words, the reason God destroyed these nations and run them out of their country was because they practiced the things that are mentioned in these verses. Now, I've heard all kinds of oppositions to this message already, um, saying that the Harry Potter books are are simply fantasy and uh, therefore represent no harm to our children whatsoever. But I want to tell you today that um, even though the story in the Harry Potter series is a fantasy story, in other words, there's no such real person as Harry Potter, there's no uh, such real person that we know of, of uh, Voldemort and um, all these characters represented in the books, that these books teach, teach, a religion. That religion is called witchcraft. And uh, witchcraft is a religion. Wicca is a religion in the United States. It's recognized as has tax exempt status. It also has a chaplain in the in the military services. And so Wicca is a religion. The Harry Potter books do definitely teach witchcraft. Our children are being taught witchcraft in the public schools by the means of uh, these these books and, of course, the movie Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Now, we're going to examine this story today. We're going to uh, go through a video presentation, and, and I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about wizards and witchcraft. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out uh, from before thee. Now let's take this list uh, and examine it just a little slower. First of all, God said that we're not to have anyone in our midst uh, that would pass their son or daughter through the fire. This was an occult practice in the Old Testament in which people actually sacrificed their children to, in the fire to their pagan and false gods. And of course God said that's an abomination. I hate it. Notice the second thing God said. He said, or that useth divination. The definition of divination is fortune telling. Being able to foretell the future by magic by anything supernatural, tarot cards, uh, tea leaves, reading the signs of the zodiac or stars or any of these things is called 
divination. In book number one of the Harry Potter series, it definitely teaches divination. He buys his occult uh, paraphernalia as he goes into Hogwarts school, the school, the thousand-year-old school of witchcraft and wizardry there in book number one. In book number four, the, the woman is possessed by an evil spirit and a voice, not her own voice, speaks out of her and she's in a full mode of channeling or prophesying. So God said, this is something that I hate. And God teaches us that divination is an abomination to him. Then he said an observer of times. Observer of times simply means astrology. A Christian, according to the Bible, has no business going to astrology and, and soothsayers and fortune tellers trying to get a word and advice on where we should live or uh, uh, where we should work or what buying a piece of property. We have the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to lead us and we're supposed to seek guidance from him. So we have uh, God said that I hate uh, an observer of times. Then he said enchanter in verse number 10. An enchanter is simply an, a magician. Our word for magician. Notice that there is a difference between a magician and somebody just doing what we would say magic tricks. If somebody just does a sleight of hand trick or a trick with uh, numbers or cards or money, that's simply a trick of hand. But ma a magician, and especially the word magic with a K on on the end of it stands for occult magic and is dependent on an outside power greater than a human being and God said this is something that I hate. Then he said a witch. In the Bible God said a witch is an abomination. Now let me say to you that in the Bible there is no such thing as a good witch. All witches are bad witches in the Bible. And God doesn't differentiate and say this is a good witch and this is an evil witch. All all witches in the Bible. There's only one kind, and just like devil. There's only one kind of devil, a bad devil. A there's only one kind of witch, a wicked witch. And so they have ma manipulate powers, and this is taught in all four of the Harry Potter series of books. And uh, one might argue that these were in... Um, Snow White, but you remember in Snow White the witch was called a wicked witch. You remember even in The Wizard of Oz, which uh, definitely was not all a good story, even in The Wizard of Oz, the wizard turned out to be a fake, the wicked witch was killed, and Dorothy, the moral of the story was, Dorothy kept saying, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. I want to go home. Home is better. In the Harry Potter books, Harry goes home for the summer and don't like how he's being treated by his relatives and cannot wait to get back to witchcraft and wizardry school where it is in fact taught uh, and children are enticed into witchcraft. Then God said in verse 11, a charmer. He said uh, a charmer is an abomination. A charmer is simply to be able to influence people by magic or casting spells or uh, have an influential power over another individual. This, of course, is taught throughout the Harry Potter books, casting of spells, so forth and so on. By the way, this is taught all through uh, America today by means of movies and uh, videos. I'll be showing you a video in just a few minutes of a movie called The Craft in which girls put a spell on another girl that they do not like, causes her hair to fall out, and they're tapping into supernatural powers that God said is an abomination. So as a Christian, we should understand that God hates it. Then he said, a consulter with familiar spirits. This, of course, is asking counsel or information from other spirits. Now, out there in the world, they call them spirit guides. They call them a higher plane of consciousness. They call them uh, uh, our leaders or great teachers and so forth and so on. But when you really want to come right down to it, folks, there's only two spirits, God's spirit and evil spirits. And anything who's not God's spirit is automatically tapped into evil spirits. So when a man consults evil spirits, then he's asking counsel from uh, the 
devil or an evil spirit or an unclean spirit, as the Bible calls it, or as we say, demons. Then God said... Also, uh, number uh, number eight there, he said a wizard in verse number 11. God said, if a man is a wizard, he's an abomination to God. Harry Potter goes to wizard school. He's taught and trained at Hogwarts Wizard School. They make no bones about it. It's presented as, a, as harmless. It's presented as normal. It's presented as just completely neutral. And you'll see that as we move along. A wizard, the definition of a wizard, is a sorcerer having magical power with the aid of spirits. And of course, this is taught all the way through this. Uh, um, He's, a curse is put on little baby Harry when he's born. Uh, the lightning bolt put on his forehead, as we'll see in just a minute. And wizardry is taught from front to back. Then God said, lastly, a necromancer. Necro, necro is the dead. Romancer, communicating with the dead. And necromancy is communication with the dead. Uh, we see these people on TV uh, supposedly crossing over and they have this audience and they'll say, I'm going to let you talk uh, a message from your dead grandfather. Well, I want to tell you something according to this book, friend. According to this book, that is not that person's dead grandfather speaking. That is an evil spirit, an unclean spirit, and God said it is an abomination. It is taught through the Harry Potter books from front to back, and we'll see that as we move along. Now, by way of introduction, I've shown you that God hates these things. It's an amazing story that baby Harry's mother gives her life sacrificially, and remember, the female is the goddess in witchcraft. The, the female gives her life sacrificially to save her little boy. He grows up, has a curse on him from Voldemort, the evil one, and they both have magic wands, Voldemort and Harry, and both their magic wands get their source of power from, from the same source, a tail feather from the phoenix, a great bird, and uh, as you'll see, the story unfolds. But what we want to do right now is move right into the video, and we'll, if you get the lights, uh, we'll, we'll move into the video presentation. I'm going to give you a little introduction on it this evening and let you see exactly what's going on in the Harry Potter books. Notice carefully as we begin the video part of this message. You'll notice, first of all, I priestess and witch do summon and stir thee. I command thy presence at this and we... This is an actual witchcraft ceremony, not anything faked. Witchcraft is the fastest growing offshoot of paganism and neo-paganism today. Hundreds of thousands of children and teenagers are joining its ranks according to reports from an ever-increasing number of pagans. It's one of the fastest growing religions in the world. Wicca, witchcraft. That's what the craft mean. This is the pagan, look at this, the pagan federation. The exciting episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer airs on TV or an enticing article on witchcraft. That is Britney Spears on the front of a magazine with an article of witchcraft in it, not by her, but in the same magazine. Enticing boys and girls to think witchcraft is normal, witchcraft is okay. Every time that Buffy the Vampire Slayer comes on and has a particularly exciting episode, so the, the man says that their, their, their email swells by leaps and bounds. Allowing morals to shift at will. Wicca teaches there is no absolute truth or sin and replaces the patriarchal male creator God of the Bible with a belief in both male and female gods. Most pagans and witches believe they must communicate with supernatural spirits, which they refer to as forces of nature. In order to receive wisdom and power for magical skills, they also embrace the concept of self-empowerment by awakening internal spirituality through meditation, visualization, and other mind-altering techniques of self-hypnosis. 
dimly lit parlors or new age fairs. In other words, you don't have to go down to downtown underground Atlanta somewhere now days to find a witch. All you have to do is have access to a TV or a, or a school in many cases and get it right pumped into your living room via the internet. Offering powers of control for personal achievements can now be found in bookstores, on the internet, in public schools and libraries, and throughout the media. Hollywood's presentation of witchcraft, as exciting and glamorous, has further increased... Hollywood's pushing it in movies and books. ...enhanced by digital technology and revolutionary special effects. Occultic spells and rituals are given visually stunning portrayals, as are the depictions of supernatural beings, ghosts, demons, vampires, mythological characters, and even Satan. A growing number Notice that our country to the evening is being infatuated with the occult, with the power of demons, with the power of devils, with the power of unclean spirits, not with Jesus, not with his precious blood, but with the devil's presentation of his religion, witchcraft. ...of magic as being the fastest growing mystical attraction among teenagers. The spectacular growth of the internet. Now notice something here. This is a picture of uh, uh, some Wicca pages that you can get on the internet, and the Harry Potter books are used as a bridge to get kids to look up witchcraft on the internet. The of transcendence has further fanned the fascination of spiritual alternatives. An unprecedented amount of occult literature is available online. At Amazon.com, for example, consumers can find more than 1,850 books on witchcraft. In that and in something. addition, hundreds of websites are dedicated to marketing witchcraft. How to teach a teenager how to become a witch. Pagans and witches worldwide can now communicate and perform ritual magic online through an ever-expanding number. You say, preacher, that's not really happening, is it? We just talked to a young lady not long ago out on her bus route, 15 years old. I asked her, did she go to church anywhere? She said, no, I'm another religion. I said, what is it? She said, I'm in Wicca, just a few miles from our church. Joining Think about that. The thousands of teenagers so that are being deceived. Exams attract boyfriends or girlfriends and get rich. The secretary... See, the devil offers power. Here's where it comes from. ...credits the Harry Potter books as the latest rage, which he says has rekindled the childlike approach to the fact that the impossible may be possible. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Harry, who he says has sparked an interest in pure magic, real magic... Potter fans turning to witchcraft! Potter, the orphan child wizard already famous in his own ma now we're going to introduce the story here notice the satanic lightning bolt on harry's forehead the mark that's the same satanic s that marilyn manson uses in his in his uh, uh satanic performances the same satanic s that kiss uses and it's it's significant because it's a lightning bolt jesus said i saw satan as lightning fall from heaven here's where it come from as he survived the murderous black magic death curse of the evil Lord Voldemort, has now duplicated his fame in the real world. Under the category of children's fantasy literature, sales of Harry Potter books have received phenomenal acceptance worldwide, breaking all records in children's literature. With over 100 million books sold in 200 countries, Harry Potter has been translated into more than 40 languages. A massive global marketing campaign partnered by Warner Brothers. Somebody's putting the big bucks, big bucks, into pushing Harry Potter. Before the public for years to come through films, toys, video games, and every type of merchandise. Recently, one of our leaders said something that saw Harry Potter hooked up with Coke, and they said, oh my goodness, isn't that awful? Uh, he's endorsing a drink with sugar in it. Now, isn't that pitiful, friend? That's how messed up our world is. It's all right if you're a witch, but don't drink sugar. This tool being used to disciple children into the darkest aspects of black magic. Through Harry Potter books and audios, children as young as kindergarten age are being introduced to human sacrifice, the sucking of blood from dead animals, and possession by spirit beings. Set in England, the Harry Potter story begins on Halloween night. Here's the story. The murder of Harry's parents by the evil Lord Voldemort. Through the sacrificial goddess magic of his mother's love, baby Harry is saved, and his blood is given magical powers. Unable to kill Harry in revenge, 
Voldemort sears a death curse of a lightning bolt on Harry's forehead. In the real world, thousands of young fans demonstrate their allegiance to Harry by taking the mark of the lightning bolt on their own. Isn't that something? Look at that lightning bolt mark on their forehead. What do you think that's getting our world ready for? Here's scenes from the movie. A supernatural owl brings the letter. Potter. You have been accepted to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft. You know that owls in the Bible represent unclean spirits. Harry is magically selected to attend the 1,000-year-old Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Both Voldemort and Harry's parents attended the prestigious boarding school. God said witchcraft and wizardry is something that he hates. Practicing occultists and instruct their students in the proper use of magic tools, spells, and rituals. Headmaster Albus Dumbledore owns a phoenix, the powerful mythological bird, the symbol of resurrection. The magical wands of both Harry and Voldemort share the same power, which is a tail feather from Dumbledore's phoenix. Now that's very important. That means that the Harry Potter books teach there's no such thing as good or bad. It's all in how you use it. Because Harry's power and Voldemort's power come from the same source. Should parents be concerned that the alluring power behind witchcraft is being made to look innocent and is being targeted towards their children? Yes, sir, it sure is. This book teaches witchcraft. I read the first one eight times, the second one three times, and the fourth one, I mean, the third one. Isn't that amazing? Kids read them over and over and over. Look at this interview on TV. I have a real argument here. Joining us now from Columbia, South Carolina, is Steve Mounts. He's a parent who has expressed concerns about the book's use at schools. Also joining us is Jennifer James from Watertown, Massachusetts. She is a children's book buyer for Wordsworth Books. All right, Mr. Mounts, let me start with you. You Here's a concerned parent. On the bestseller list, winner of the National Book Award in the UK. Kids love them. So what do you find particularly objectionable about these books? The thing that we found, my wife and I found objectionable, was it was being read aloud to our son in his class. And uh, there were things that we believe had a religious connotation to them, witchcraft, Wicca. Uh, which the Supreme Court has now said is a religion. The IRS has given it religious status. Amen, brother. Amen. That fellow said, hey, you're not going to teach religion to my kid in school, especially if it's witchcraft. Now, you went before the South Carolina Board of Education earlier this week. Uh, what are you asking the board to do? We asked them to review the book for religious content, for violence, uh, in this post-Columbine era that we're living in. Now, what this means and saying is, hey, if they can't teach Christianity in the school, how can you, well, you say, well, they're not really teaching it. Okay, let's put a book in the school that teaches about a young man who, who grows up and becomes a Christian. And he gets saved, lives for God. Let's do that. It can be a fantasy story, but it still teaches Christianity. It won't happen. Look at a couple of passages from the book here. This is from book one. See what I have become, the face said, mere shadow and vapor. I have form only when I can share another's body. But there have always been those willing to let me into their hearts and minds. Unicorn Woman. blood has strengthened me these past weeks. Yikes. You Check that blood. out. Uh, Jennifer, you hear that and you think, well, maybe um, Mr. Mouse has a point here. I think it's just fantasy. It's, it's a book. It's not reality. And okay, if it's just fantasy, let's put some Christian books in there. That's just fantasy. Listen. Roll that. Do we have that? This is the author of the Harry Potter right the books. That I was writing that. J.K. Rowling. I'm going to tell a lie. I wasn't going to pretend that an evil person is a cardboard cutout and no one really gets hurt. Okay, if you're writing about evil, I think you, you genuinely you have a responsibility to show what that means. And she says that two-thirds of her material came from actual study she's done on witchcraft. I think they're very moral books. Steve Mouse, uh, there seems to be some merit in what she just said. How can you argue with that? Fire at the bookstore. Are you finding this to be a real phenomenon at your store, these books? Yes, we've never seen anything like it. It's unbelievable, and we're all 
very happy. I'm sure they are. They're selling books. About it is it the sales or is it the fact that kids are really loving to read now? The children run into the store, want to buy the book, and sit down and start reading it before they leave the store. And the Bible said the love of money is the root of all evil. The first weekend this movie came out, it made ninety-three million dollars, surpassing every movie that's ever hit the box it's office. Merely children's fantasy, and therefore it's harmless. The lie about this is that witchcraft is reality. J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series, has gone through an awful lot of research. She is very accurate, otherwise we would have witches all over the country and the world saying this is not a true representation of our religion. This is a true representation of witchcraft and the black arts and black magic. And yet we have people that say this is merely fantasy and harmless reading for our children. Actually, what makes this more dangerous is that it is couched in fantasy language and children's literature and made to be humorous and beautifully written and extremely provocative reading and it just opens up children to want to have the next one. This is what is so harmful. Joanne Rowling majored in mythology in Exeter University in England. She has borrowed not only from pagan religions, Celtic religions, the religions of the Druids, witchcraft, Satanism, a lot of the spells, the incantations, the, the philosophy behind the mythology and the religions is being put into Harry Potter's books. Yes, Harry Potter may be fictional, but there is a lot of religious teaching. See, the devil's smart. The Bible said we're not supposed to be ignorant of his devices. And he's figured out a way to teach witchcraft in the school where we would have never allowed it any other, any other way or time. It can take place inside, through meditation, you have inner transformation, inner wisdom, inner knowledge. And all this is done through concentration, visualization, all through Harry's books. Hermione and others say, concentrate, Harry. If you concentrate hard enough, you can have what you want. Ching the con Isn't that something? Yes. Now, notice that even, even in the books, uh, Harry's blood is supposedly have supernatural power. The sorcerer's stone itself is to make, it, it can make some kind of potion. If the person drinks of that potion, they can become immortal. Teaching kids there's other ways to get eternal life than through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Death that she gave through love is a symbolism of goddess worship. It's an inversion, if you will, of God the Father whose Son gave his life Amen. in love for Amen. His people. Now, the Amen. concept of the goddess is very, very important. Harry's mother gave her life for Harry so that he should be saved. And through this love sacrifice, Harry was protected from death. Now, this concept is brought up several times. In fact, it is so important in witchcraft and pagan thinking that Voltimore, Harry's arch enemy, takes a vial of blood from Harry in book number four in order to have the blood run through his own veins in order that he can be resurrected and have a body. Listen to that, folks. How powerful the blood sacrifices. You say, oh, it's not real. Well... Uh, it, it is going on and it is taking place Another even though the story itself might be fantasy this stuff is taking place all over the world because the story is taken from true witchcraft sacrificing drinking of blood demon possession uh, possessing another body coming back from the dead all these things are things which God said are an abomination and I hate them changing is very normal it is horrible and now they're talking about shape changing. This is called lycanthropy. And that means when a, a person changes into an animal or an animal changes into a person. This happens in the movie where a bird changes into one of the teachers, I think. Wizardry ...with Harry's parents. And we're not awfully sure what the reasons are, but for perhaps jealousy because Harry's parents represented practicing the white side or the good side of magic. Baltimore, at the birth of Harry, wanted to kill Harry and Harry's parents. 
But somehow in this horrible battle, some of Baltimore's powers came to Harry, and Harry got a death curse, a bolt of lightning, on his forehead as a mark of the curse. Let me tell you something, that didn't come from God, brother. That's Whoever okay. inspired that knows what's coming, fixing to happen in this world. There's an antichrist coming on this world one day, and he's going to require you to have a mark on your forehead or hand, and no man can buy or sell without that mark. And all this is, is like tattoos and everything, is getting people used to marking their body. The most famous little boy in the world right now, yeah. Harry Potter, has a lightning bolt marked on his forehead. Phoenix, again, is a symbol of resurrection. Now let's notice the religion of witchcraft. Witchcraft is a religion. It gets tax-exempt status. It has a military chaplain. And it is recognized as a religion, a practicing religion. It is the fastest growing religion in America, incidentally, as well. I regard myself as a natural witch. Um, I was uh, um, regarding myself as a witch since early childhood. Um, I was brought up in a very isolated part of the country uh, on the Welsh border, which has a long tradition of magic and uh, Welsh sorcerers. Since I have been... Listen to this. ...the craft, there has been a great revival. There are probably now as many people practicing witchcraft as there are Christians. My, 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 my. Isn't that pitiful? Isn't that pitiful? She said there's been a great revival while churches have slept and people have argued and laid out of God's house and went to the mountains on Sunday and forgot God's book and God's word. The devil has had his preachers out having a revival. The devil's preachers make movies and books and evangelize people into his religion, the religion of witchcraft. And paints those which are called diva or local gods. We learn as practicing witches to tap into forces of nature. They're tapping into forces. See, the Bible calls them familiar spirits or de uh, uh, demons or devils. The primary offer of witchcraft is power, a very seductive power. And you see me. And said, I know how powerful these forces are. And I look at the lives of Christians. And I think my power is more powerful than what they're experiencing. My, isn't that something, friend? The, the young man came to him and he said, uh, I look at churches and I see what they've got and the devil's got more power. But I want to say this, this today, friend, that, that God said that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. As, uh, we as God's people have something greater in us than ever demon, ever devil, ever unclean spirit in the world or out of the world. And God said not to do these things These are an abomination unto the Lord and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before notice what the Bible says about witchcraft chapter 15 God identifies witchcraft as a sin for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft so God said witchcraft is a sin so to teach kids the Harry Potter books is to teach in them a religion that God Almighty the Creator said was a sin now notice this Harry is going to now use in his boarding school Hogwarts and this is done in Diagnon Alley which is a sort of spiritual occult supermarket flea market if you will a street filled with shops of cauldrons owls robes Oh. Makers of fine wands, see? Show him how to get his magic wand. By witches in their rituals and ceremonies and spells today. So that is an abomination to God. A magic wand, blood sacrifices, all these things. the basis of the religion of witchcraft. Notice now, we're going to study a little bit about spells and how young people are enticed. The, Bi uh, the Bible talks to us about these things in the scripture I read to you a while ago. Here it said, this woman has bewitched the world. The spells aren't legitimate spells, and because J.K. Rowling just pulls out... Bless. There, they cast a spell on their little buddy there. Is ...that if you learn certain words, you can have power. And the books, the Harry Potter series, are connected to websites that get you into arenas where there are experts at teaching you the spells, the legitimate spells. So you can just jump right over onto the internet, hop right into the real uh, Wiccan witchcraft pages, and teach you legitimate spells. So the Harry Potter book is opening the doors for young people to be enticed into witchcraft. The Gentiles and the pagan. Queen of 
fell, queen of hell, on it hunter of the night. Lend your power to us. My goodness, that sounds like some religions I've been around a little bit and saw footage of. This is what spells are repetitive prayer, repetitive prayer, which. That's why Jesus said, use not vain repetition as the heathen do. Probably. For they think they should be heard for their much speaking. A moment, but, uh, opposite sex thing. But love spells are very, very, very important in witchcraft. Now, I want you to notice something here. What they're saying is you can get power to cast love spell. If you love somebody, if a, if a man loves a woman or vice versa and they don't, they don't love them back, you cast a spell on them. And you're going to see a movie that all the kids in America just about have seen called The Crowd. Come out a few years ago. And in this movie, the girl gets the boy she wants by casting a spell on him. Powers of the devil. Notice. Magic of love. They want the boy they want or they want the girl they want and so they get involved in spells and the websites are also pushing the fact of teaching children love spells. Isn't that something? Because every kid wants to have, uh, be loved and accepted. Every kid wants to do good in school and they're enticed. What's this movie here? It glamorizes the whole concept and through this film, The Craft, you can see that here where the girl wants to have her boy, she... Notice the first thing they do is they all prick their finger and put the blood in a cup and all the teenage girls drink each other's blood in, in order to cast a spell on the man. Lord have mercy. And we're saying that there's nothing wrong with this stuff. God said it is an abomination. You're going to make up your mind whether you agree with God or let the devil just slip this stuff in on you, friend. Notice how she cast a spell on the boy who don't even like her and then he madly, he's madly in love with her. Watch this. Very powerful ceremony calling down the love spirits and of course she gets the boy she wants and he doesn't know what is happening and why he is being seduced in a sense through his spirit how this happened she drinks of her sister's blood showing that spells work I drink of my sisters and I ask to love myself more and to allow myself to be loved more by others especially Chris so she gets the boy she wants there he is and then notice what happens here well it's just that you know I can't stop thinking about you and I don't know why but I think I love you oh Sarah wait please Sarah please look I don't know what's happening to me I, I, I can't eat I can't sleep they can help me there he says, nothing can help me. Something's got a hold of me. Something's caused me. And, and kids are being enticed to this because they think that the devil will give them power. And he will give them power. But what they don't realize is that the devil don't play fair. And the devil will wind them up in hell fire one day where they'll never have a prayer answered and God can't help them there. Watch it now. Reader is learning that they can be involved in vengeance through curses, and perhaps the curses in Harry Potter's books aren't legitimate. Graphic uh, scene in the craft. Now here, this girl don't like this other girl. This other girl has pretty blonde hair, and this girl here doesn't like her. So they're meeting together in a witchcraft spell, casting a spell on the other girl, and lo and behold, her hair falls out. A girl has upset another girl, and so there's a little braiding in the scene here that she wants to put a curse on her through her hair falling out, and through the power of the curse and the rituals and whatever words are used, the hair falls out and this girl is screaming and writhing and says she doesn't know what's happened and of course she has no idea of the curse but what's being told to the viewer is that there is power in curses, there is power in magic. My, 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 my. These Christian kids don't, don't even realize that there's a power greater than they out there trying to seduce them, trying to overrun them. And it's called the power of the devil. It's not higher sources and it's not enlightenment and broadening your intellect. It's tapping into forces that have come from hell and the devil come out of the center of that pentagram. They open themselves up to these powers to come into them and to control them. And when they open Open themselves up to these spirits, they find themselves doing obsessive compulsive things such as drugs and sex and alcohol and many other destructive and violent activities. See, they don't know that the devil doesn't play fair and once he gets a foothold in your life, then he takes completely over. And in the end, 
they've lost control of themselves. Isn't that something? I can't really How pitiful. I'm interested in Wicca because it's always been part of me, part of my roots. I love Halloween. I think I'm a very autumn person. We dress up the house with cobwebs and so on, and we cast a circle, and we have a smoky cauldron, and we all scry, which means cl do clairvoyance. Cr scry, Harry Potter does that in his books. And we open the gates of the underworld, and if any spirits want to come forward and speak, do you hear that? we listen to them. At my first initiation... She said, we open the gates of the underworld, and if any spirits want to come forth, we listen to them. My, 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 isn't this something? It's the fastest growing religion, the lady said, in the country. First degree was on Halloween, and uh, I felt very, very much in tune with the God. Wasn't God, sister. It was the wrong one. There are supernatural spirits that come back. There are See the spirits? Teach him that what? Where people come out of the paintings along the corridors of Hogwarts. That you don't really die when you die. Gives the child the concept that... Harry's Potter, Harry Potter's parents wave at him from a painting, and they've been dead for years and years. Spirits come back and possess other bodies. Is this what we want our children to believe in? The creatures that Hagrid um, has in his class of uh, mythical creatures, all these things fire up the imagination of the young reader to think that when they get involved, that they're not fearful of it because it's part of Harry's world, it's part of Hogwarts, and so the element of fear is taken away. So when he goes on to a broomstick, when his teacher tells him not to go on to the broomstick, and he does in defiance, he is rewarded for disobedience by being put onto the quidditch. Do you hear that? Dorothy says there's no place like home, it's wrong to tell a lie, and it's moral. Harry gets rewarded when he does, disobeys, and his little girl, the, the little girl here, gets rewarded when she lies for him. Throughout the, the earlier parts of the books, she is considered by Ron and Harry to be somebody that they don't want to be with. However, she lies to protect them, and this lie changes them, and the reward is that she becomes one of the trio and the team. So this kind of shifting situational ethics, non-absolutism, relativism, is so contrary to the biblical concept of God is a God of truth, a God of right, a God of justice, and here is the bottom line of witchcraft being taught through the Harry Potter books, and it is part of a religious philosophy. Yes, sir, it sure is. So we now have religion being taught in the schools. Take your right hand over the broom and say, up. up. See, all these, uh, the pointed out, the broomstick, the, uh, the uh, unicorn are wicked symbols in witchcraft. The, the pointed hat of the, of the witches. The all of these things are wicked symbols. Now, what's this? Demon possession. It's a possibility. If you don't cast a circle, um, the forces that could come into the room could take over uh, in, a, in a form of possession. Um, we had one, one example here. Now... This girl's going to tell you about an example where an evil spirit actually comes in, takes over the girl's body, she passes out. Notice that pentagram. I hadn't said much about that, but it's throughout rock and roll. Uh, many, many of the rock albums, the five-pointed star that looks like a goat's head, see? The, the chin down the ear, two ears out, and the horn. The power comes out of the center of that pentagram. They believe the power from hell comes out of the center of that pentagram. Uh, one young woman, a nurse, was um, possessed by, I don't know what it was, but a, a horrible voice came through her, and she passed out. Hail to the guardians of the world. Now, another scene from the craft here. This, this movie was viewed by most teenagers in America who watch movies regular. It's in all the video stores. And here, ladies and gentlemen, the teenagers meet out on the, looks like the beach or somewhere, and they are calling on Satan to come and possess them. They don't call him by that name, but they call him that old serpent. And that's exactly what the Bible calls uh, the devil over in the book of Revelation when they bind him hand and foot. Watch how she gets possessed by the devil. Us, hear us. Hail to the guardians of the watchtower.
Towers of the South. Power this is being told to our teenagers like it's normal, like it's preferable. Ada it's the devil trying to deceive a generation of young people. Serpent of old. Hear that? I got on here again. Serpent of old. Guardian of the bitter sea. Guardian of the sea. Show us your glory. Show us your power. Show us your power. My, my, my. Calling on the serpent. Calling on the devil to possess them. Listen, young people. You're in a battle. you got to decide which way you're going to go. Watch the power of the devil come. If you make yourself available to Satan, Brother Hill, sure, take you up on it. We invoke thee. We invoke thee. And of course, the devil's power comes in and possesses the leader of the group there, and then she has supernatural power. Notice it does it through a lightning bolt. Jesus said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. The Here she's talking about evil spirits. Beings, that's the easy thing to call them, which can be can be people who have lived on the earth. or they No, they're not either. They're devils from hell. They become almost as real as the people standing next to you. And whoever else you call doesn't actually materialize. You can't see them in, in the physical sense, but mentally you know that they are there. Isn't that something? See them in your mind's eye. My, my, my. I have uh, on occasion touched upon, I suppose you could call them spirit guides. Um, people describe them in different ways. The Bible calls them unclean spirits, devils. A hierarchy of spiritual advisors who live on another plane of consciousness that you can approach that will acknowledge you and advise you and assist you. They'll acknowledge you and advise you and assist you. Now this girl says I can feel him in my veins saying the devil's still in me. In my veins. He's still in me. And such a thing as possession. My, 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 my. Isn't that pitiful today? So many young people are being deceived. Watch what happens in Harry Potter. We See the evil spirit? This is the little 11-year-old girl through her writings in a journal where her feelings, her emotions, her thoughts that she is writing in the diary of the young Baltimore is giving him power to rise up and he possesses this girl and he mocks and laughs at Harry later on in the book when he says she didn't even know that she was killing on Halloween. Isn't that something? All over and she'd write in the diary, I don't know what came into me. I think I'm going mad because I'm doing things that I have no control over. So here she was, a little 11 year old girl in Harry Potter's book, possessed by Baltimore's spirit, murdering on Halloween. And, and and there's nothing wrong with Harry Potter. Come on now, listen to that. Possessed by Baltimore's spirit, murdering on Halloween. And, and and there's nothing wrong with Harry Potter. Yes, sir, there sure is, ladies and gentlemen. There sure is. Scholastic Incorporated is the publisher of the Harry Potter series and is teaching that 11-year-old girl is possessed by a spirit and murders somebody on Halloween. And I'm telling you, we, we wonder why that our nation's young people are in such a shape. You, you put a book that teaches Christianity out there. I passed by the movie theater the other day going through town and just glanced over in the parking lot and there were public school buses. Fill the parking lot nearly of the movie theater of our kids being taken to see the Harry Potter movie. Here's how it comes about. Publisher of children's books in the world, Scholastic Inc., the U.S. publisher of the Harry Potter series, supplies nearly every public school in America with its products, thereby reaching more than 32 million children each year. In the last two decades, Scholastic has been producing more and more materials.
featuring witchcraft, graphic horror, supernaturalism, and spiritism. Scholastic eagerly secured the publishing rights to Harry Potter, which far surpassed the popularity of its predecessor, the occultic theme shock fiction book and video series, Goosebumps. As a supplier of teaching materials to American schools for over 80 years, Scholastic used its unrivaled position in the educational system to flood classrooms and libraries with Harry Potter books. In other words, the devil found a way in, and he's moved in. 35 school-based magazines, published for grades K through 12, tirelessly markets the Potter books to students while its award-winning website helps integrate Harry Potter materials into classroom activities. Scholastic pride themselves in supporting educators by networking resources through their revolutionary online curriculum systems. While the reading of Bible-based material is banned in American schools, the religion of witchcraft, repackaged through Harry Potter, is given honorable status. Did you hear what the man said? Anything teaching Christianity is banned in the public school, but the religion of witchcraft is celebrated and pushed and required reading in many schools. Who supplies this literature to schools, and by the way, there are lots of teaching guides. For instance, there's Elizabeth Schaefer has Listen to this. his handbook on how to um, understand Harry and goes into the symbolism of Harry, the mythology of Harry, which is all based on real mythology. Isn't that something? With Schaefer's book, she encourages the student to go to actual Wiccan, the, the websites of the Celts, Druids, uh, Pagans. So this woman writing about the Harry Potter encourages the students to go to the websites. Isn't that something? Through the public school system. She also went into undermining the Bible, choosing Christian mystics that did not find the Bible the infallible. That's why one of the great reformers used to say, I fear that the schools of America will become the great gates of hell. He said, I advise no one to place their children where the scriptures do not reign paramount. Something has gone wrong in this country. Well, it was based on the word of God and the God of the Bible. To these sites, I actually got email back thanking me for being interested in witchcraft and introducing me to basic 101s in witchcraft by practicing witches from the witch's voice a she got email back when she checked them out okay, the, the bridges were so clearly seen listen to this that okay the, the child is introduced to what is called fantasy literature in the school system supported by taxpayer money it is a a religion being taught through her the fascinating you with uh, Wiccan philosophical worldview. We have a indoctrination program that is enticing us to further darker knowledge that now any child my, 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 friend. It, and that's something. child can just follow the web pages. That's what's wrong with this world. It's laying in the lap of the devil. It's on a backward course going the wrong way. May God help us to turn around and jump in the arms of Jesus before it's too late. And they love to like them. Whatever it is that they are told be possible through sorcery. J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series, admitted that she got many, many requests for children that wanted to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft. You think children don't take it seriously? Listen to these things. Books that are out there and interviews with children that they really wonder at night while they're laying awake if there is a Hogwarts that they can go to. If you go to the Warner Brothers site, they ask you to enlist into Hogwarts. Well, there are sites out there that are pulling in your children children who are interested in learning more in various different schools. They talk to snakes, the snakes talk to them in the books. It's the most unbelievable pile of uh, witchcraft you've, we've ever been hit with in this country. Look what these poor little boys and girls are being taught and believe. to wizard school, I might be able to do spells and potion and fly on a broomstick. It would be great to be a wizard because you could control situations and things like teachers. Isn't this something? You don't have to work and be smart no more. Just control them by a spell.
I like to go to wizard school and learn magic and put spells on people. I'd make up an ugly spell and then it's payback time. I feel like I'm inside Harry's world. If I went to wizard school, I'd study everything, spells, counterspell, and defense against the dark arts. I liked it when the bad guys killed the unicorn and Voldemort drank its blood. The books are very clever. I couldn't put them down. When I was scared, I made myself to believe it was supposed to be funny, so I wasn't too scared. Now we'll stop the video presentation, uh, part of the presentation right there, if you get me the lights. I'm going to close the message with a few comments and, then give you, and bring the message to a close today. Basically, there's three things the Harry Potter books and series and movie are teaching to our boys and girls. Now, it's going to boil down to two lines, my friend. There's God and there's Satan. You're following one or the other right now. And we're seeing a generation of kids seduced into following the wrong spirit. What are the Harry, Harry Potter books saying? Three things. Number one. They are basically saying there is no such thing as good or bad, right or wrong. It's all relative. It's only in the mind of the person or the deeds that they do. You can all do magic or you can use it good or bad. In the Bible, God does not make that distinction. In the Bible, there's no such thing as good witch, craft, good wizardry, and uh, good magic from outer, outside forces. God doesn't use his power uh, to do magic tricks with. God uses his power to bless people and draw people to Jesus Christ and save them and help them repent of their sins and get ready for a home in heaven one of these days. That's what God's power is for. Kids are being taught that witchcraft is harmless and normal and it's nothing bad about it. You can do wrong and get by with it. You can even be rewarded for doing wrong. As Harry rides his broomstick when he's not supposed to, and instead of being punished, he winds up getting to be on the Quidditch team. Quidditch team is like a witchcraft football team. And Hermione, the little girl, tells a lie to cover up uh, for Harry and the other little boy there, and she's rewarded and gets accepted into the group as part of the group. So there is no right and wrong in the Harry Potter series. I'm going to tell you something, friend. According to this book that our founding fathers founded the United States of America in, there is an absolute right and an absolute wrong, and God's never changed his mind about right and wrong. That's the first thing the Harry Potter series teaches. The second thing, they teach that you can get what you want, control people, get the person you love, money, make better grades, control situations by spells. If you cooperate with spirits outside your body and practice witchcraft, now, I don't know about you, but that's not what I want my children taught. I want my children taught they, if they, uh, they have to earn their own way, pay their own uh, bills, work, make their own money, and do right, and you don't get, there's no shortcuts by power of witchcraft to fame and fortune. You, that's, that is witchcraft being taught in our school. Harry puts a spell on his auntie. His auntie says something bad about his dead mother. Harry casts a spell on her, and she swells up real big. That's what's being taught in the Harry Potter series. Number three, the Harry Potter series teaches that when you die, you're really not dead. You're really not dead. You just come and go as spirits. You can possess. You can be in paintings and pictures and wave at people and possess other bodies. There's one uh, story where they drag up a man's bone out of a grave, cut flesh off of another individual, get blood from Harry or somebody else, put it all together, and a spirit possesses that thing and makes him a body. That's what a, a demon or a devil is. It's a disembodied spirit looking for something to possess. So the Harry Potter series teaches is when you die, you're really not dead. You can come and go, wave, do all kinds of things. And it, it possess bodies. Necromancy, lycanthropy, which is changing from animals into people and, and vice versa. Like they do on the Snoop Doggy Dogs videos and other rock and roll and, and, and videos. This is witchcraft being taught pushed and even required in many of our schools, pushed upon our boys and girls, and every Christian parent should say, uh, as for me and my house, we will serve 
the Lord. Now, I want to say something in closing today, and I want you to take this message to heart. In 1980, the Supreme Court ruled that they could not put a copy of the Ten Commandments on the walls in, in the schools in Kentucky, uh, public schools, and most uh, states followed suit. And uh, they could not do it. They said two reasons. Number one, if we put the Ten Commandments on the wall, kids might read them. And number two, might be inclined to obey them. So what will we be doing? We'll be influencing kids to live by the Ten Commandments, just sticking them on the wall. Now you tell me, and be honest with me that if you show a high-tech video projection movie and book with the, with the teacher and the whole school system endorsing it, appealing to the child's sinful nature and teaching them witchcraft that they're not going to be enticed to try it, when they're afraid that a copy of the Ten Commandments on the wall... Somebody said, well, uh, 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 I'm telling you, these books are just fantasy and they're harmless. Well, you know, a few years ago, a man by the name of Tim LaHaye, assisted by Jerry Jenkins, wrote a series of books. They're the Left Behind series. You probably saw them in bookstores. And these books teach that uh, they, it's a story. It's a fantasy story. It hasn't really happened. Fic fictional characters about a man flying on an airplane. The rapture occurs. The tribulation takes place. Uh, the Antichrist comes up. And boy, they are exciting. Even though they're fantasy, they're not true. Those movies, the left behind movies, will never be shown in our school. And those books will never be required. You know why? Because they say those books are teaching Christianity. I want to tell you, we see in a lot of hypocrisy and double standards here because the books of the Harry Potter books are teaching witchcraft. And may God help us to understand that. Joe Cool, the old camel, the, the, the old smoking camel, used to advertise cigarettes. They took him off because they said children, even though he's fictional, might be encouraged to smoke cigarettes. Now I'm going to tell you that if you teach kids something that they love and teach them witchcraft, many, not all, many will be enticed to study witchcraft. I want to encourage you today, friend, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. If you're watching this video and you don't know 100% sure that you're saved and on your way to heaven, the Bible said in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and you'll believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. In the Bible, there's only two spirits, God's spirit and all the evil spirits. In the Bible, there's only two places that you can go when you die, heaven or hell. You will stay there forever and ever. You're not going to come back. You're not going to reincarnate. You're not going to come back and try it again in another life. It's hell forever or heaven forever. Return to the God of the Bible. Return to Jesus Christ and trust Him to be your personal Savior and Lord. May God help you. I'm going to have a word of prayer with you and this will conclude the message. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd bless every single person who views this presentation. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit will open the eyes of many, many hundreds and thousands of parents and boys and girls and mamas and daddies. And Lord, let us see a great revival, not of paganism, not of witchcraft, but of old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival in the hearts and lives of your people. Help us to return to the God of the Bible, the God of heaven, the God of creation, and turn to him with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.